Hey everyone, welcome to RJK English. Today we're going to start a section where we're going to talk about vocabulary in English. Now, vocabulary in English is notoriously difficult, um, not because English has things that other languages have, like, you know, conjugations that are difficult. I mean, really, our conjugations are not that difficult in English. One of the major problems is what we're going to learn today. English has a, what this person calls a colorful history. So this is written by Steve, uh, 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 probably Steve McLean. This is on this WordPress site and I really, really like it. Um, I've been reading um, uh, Cambridge Encyclopedia of the English Language and many other books and this this particular article distills it very well let's look at this um visual he has down here and just start with this so uh, go back one moment so here are two people and they're going to represent, kind of give a representation of the two sides of English at a basic level. On the one side, we have the Anglo-Saxon. What is Anglo-Saxon? This is when the, what we now know as the English, took over the British Isles. Um, Anglo-Saxon is Germanic. If you know the, um, the movie or the book Beowulf, that is early um, Anglo-Saxon. It's very much like German, Old German. Um, and that is one part of our language. That's the root of our grammar. And then on the other side, we have Latinate. Why do we call it Latinate? Well, Latin is the base, which is the Roman Empire, Latin. But through French, we get a lot of words. So French and Latin. They kind of call it Latinate. That's the other side of our language. So German, uh, Germanic is the main structure of our language, modified by French, which we'll learn about. So actually French word order to me is, from my learning at this point, is closer to English um, than uh, German, but our basic structure is Germanic. And French is influenced by German, uh, Germanic languages. So if you look at this guy, we, he's burly. You know, he's burly and strong, to the point, practical, a war, uh, a warrior. The other side is refined. And the Latinate and French side, French side is going to be a little more refined. The German side is going to be more direct. And if you've heard, uh, listened to, or watched any of my videos that are about music in the United States, our poetry is very direct. Now the English, they're they're different. You know, we are an offshoot of Britain, and um, we have our own history. We tend to be more direct, and um, Anglo-Saxon language plays a part in that. So, anyways. We're going to move up. You're going to see my face again. Hello, everyone. So have you ever wondered why English has so many synonyms? Synonyms, even this word right here, I believe that would be a, I believe that would be Greek. Um, it's because we have two main sources, Germanic and Latin or Latinate. The other is Greek. So in science and technology and mathematics, Greek plays a huge part in that. Words derived from the Germanic roots are the Anglo-Saxon, that's the Angles and Saxons and the Jutes that came from uh, like around the Netherlands area in Denmark um, into um, uh, Britain and the Norse uh, that came as Vikings a little bit later, then uh, the Greek and Latin and French. 
historically, um, in the fifth century AD, the English, the Angles and the Saxons and the Jutes invaded Britain. If you know the story of King Arthur, that's the story of the Celtic Britons fighting the Saxons. That's when Anglo-Saxon came in, which is our English. Um, it was 100% German, a Germanic in the beginning. So throughout the 8th the ninth centuries, the Norse, the Vikings then came and they brought some more uh, Germanic words into English. And they also, I think, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that they brought the th and the as well, because you don't see that in Germanic languages except for the Scandinavian languages much. But they brought the th and the. So then in 1066, the uh, Norman speaking uh, French, which were actually Vikings that learned French in uh, um, Normandy area, um, they invaded and took over Britain. So they brought French into English and that brought about Middle English. So that brought a lot of French words and French style into English. Now think about it. It would be the rulers that would be French speaking. The rest of the people would be English speaking. So they would try to take on some of the French in order to move up in society. I believe even now the British uh, king and queen, when they, when they give their royal proclamations, they give it in Norman French. This is what I understand is that uh, I'd, I'd have to look into it more. I don't really care about the British king and queen very much. Um, so we had Middle English. Um, Shakespeare is not Middle English. Okay, that's kind of important here. So Shakespeare is not a, a Middle English. He is Modern English. Chaucer would be Middle English. So let's see where okay so here is some old english and this is from beowulf uh i'm gonna wait we gardena in guard gardegum theod sininga frim gefrunen huda athelingas ellen fremadon something like that i can't understand any of that unless maybe uh the guardians in the kingdom, something like that, you know, but we can't understand it. Here's Middle English. When that April with his surest suit, the drought of March hath perched to the root. Okay, I can kind of understand that. William Shakespeare is modern English. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Now it's uh, early modern English, but I can basically understand it. Okay, going past that. Oh, and one other thing. Um, during the Renaissance, which would be Shakespeare's time, the Renaissance means the rediscovery. And what was the rediscovery of? Roman and Greek um, uh, philosophy and um, mathematics and uh, and everything like that. Where did we get it from? We, we got it from the, the Arabic kingdoms, you know. So they had, uh, after the fall of Rome, the Muslim empires were the seat of all science. They had Aristotle. We had, uh, we, see, I still say we. The Europeans had Plato, and they had some, but the Arab kingdoms really had excuse me, um, Aristotle and the majority of the Greek texts. And um, they carried on the Greek and Roman learning along with the Byzantine Empire, which is the Greek empire um, of what is now Turkey, but was then Byzantium. So the Western, the West was kind of, they were in the Dark Ages. They received some of the uh, Arab learning and that brought about the Renaissance. Um, so the Renaissance is really just European discovery of what was going on already. 
So at that time, we already, in English, we already had uh, French and Latin brought in through the church, but all of a sudden with the, uh, with science and literature and mathematics, philosophy and everything expanding, they needed to use new terms and they used a lot of Latin and Greek. That, so we brought a lot of that in as well. Um, that's a, this might seem like, okay, why are you telling me all this? Well, I want to tell you why we have all this strangeness in our language. So I'm going to stop here and we're, we'll start up next time with the second part. So the second part, we're going to go through the rest of this. Where we're going to compare the Germanic words to the Latinate words. And you'll see how we use them in English. It might give you some insight into how we talk in English. I think especially for Americans. So anyways, um, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, give me a comment. Uh, make sure to hit the like button and comment. And go to um, uh, Facebook, RJK English, and tell me what you think and we can have further conversation. All right. See you next time.